Welcome to Frontline News. Coming up, how medical students are doing their part to fight COVID-19 by giving their time and talent. And Dean Reese will talk about the importance of interdisciplinary teamwork in our efforts to fight the pandemic. But first, a massive phase one vaccine trial is underway at the Center for Vaccine Development and Global Health to test experimental vaccines that use a genetic messenger called mRNA. Joining us exclusively now is one of the lead investigators in this trial, Dr. Kathleen Newsel, director of the Center for Vaccine Development and Global Health at University of Maryland School of Medicine. Thank you so much for being with us, Dr. Newsel. And first off, just how optimistic are you about the success of this trial? So this is a virus that we knew nothing about five months ago. And the fact that we already have multiple vaccines in clinical trials is really is cause for optimism. There are four vaccines right now being tested, and they're different from what most people think of as vaccines because you're not actually injecting the virus protein. So how do they work? Yeah, so we have a variety of different vaccines, both in development and, as you said, being tested right now. This particular vaccine, an mRNA vaccine, actually uses the genetic code. So rather than, for example, with an influenza vaccine, where we may give you an inactivated piece of the virus, here we're giving the genetic code to the volunteers, and then that genetic code is telling our own cells to make that protein, that surface protein that looks like the virus protein. So the hope is that um, our bodies will be fooled into thinking it's seeing the SARS-CoV-2 virus, monin antibody response, and yet the RNA itself will simply disappear and disintegrate over time and will never incorporate into our cells. The trial is being conducted with unprecedented speed and includes participants between the ages of 18 and 85. Because this is a phase one trial, it is uh, double blinded and randomized. So I'm not actually sure on my end, like if I got one of the vaccine candidates or if I had a placebo. So we're employing all the normal safety precautions. Personally, both my parents are in the, uh, the, the low end of the high risk age group. My grandparents up in New England, uh, th that region has been hard hit, especially in uh, spaces where, where people over you know 75 and 80 years old are living. Um, so far, everybody's doing well, but I recognize on a personal level and on a community level just the urgency that there is to move these vaccines forward. It took two weeks of round-the-clock work to get the trial off the ground. From the nursing staff, the recruiting staff, I have to credit our IRB, the dean's office, our, um, the Office of Research and Development, from every single level. And it took a lot of work at every level of the university to make this happen. Whether it's a vaccine trial or a clinical intervention to save COVID patients, it takes teamwork. The level of cooperation at this time is unprecedented. Last week, for example, we featured COVID-19 patients who are on, on uh, ECMO in the biocontainment unit. And what you're seeing there is really a cooperation of folks from the Department of Medicine, surgery, trauma, nurse practitioners, everybody working together in a very collaborative, cooperative way. We see the same thing happening in our research programs, whether that happens to be in exploring therapeutics or vaccines, or just trying to understand the biology of the COVID-19 disease. Our medical students are exemplifying teamwork by volunteering to help with personal protective gear, contact tracing and testing, and by developing a mobile app that provides easy access to care guidelines. So it's a mobile um, application that um, clinicians at um, University of Maryland can download on their phone. And what it has is kind of a lot of the patient care guidelines in terms of, you know, pharmacologic treatment, what the current recommendations are from infectious disease, um, as well as a lot of, you know, patient logistics of, um, you know, where the patients are admitted to, that, those sort of policy things. I personally have uh, an interest in public health, so this has been uh, really illustrative it, as far as um, what a robust like public health response looks like from a hospital's perspective. And um, it's been really, uh, I, I've just been very impressed at how um, sort of creative and innovative um, the hospital has been and um, their willingness to involve students, um, I think is commendable as well. Although that 
I would like to, you know, identify as somebody who's a provider. Right now, I just need to be a good citizen and community member. And I think that all the medical students have really risen to the occasion and said, you know, here I am, I can help however I can. Um, and I just want to make myself available. And I'm incredibly proud of, uh, you know, that sense of service. You can stay up to date by visiting the coronavirus update page on the School of Medicine website. Until next week, I'm Larry Roberts for the University of Maryland School of Medicine.